weird magnet things. Please tell me what this is. So here's a jar of salt water, weighing 62.4484. Now watch what happens when I push the magnet right underneath. <laughs> suddenly drops down to 42 something and then it goes up again and then I'll pull the magnet away dips down goes back up there's a sudden dip Try it one more time. So four four eight four dips down four two four three and then back up to four four eight four. Pull it away. Dips down. Goes back up again. If you look at this, you'll see that it's. Well, it seems to be diamagnetic. So it should. If I put this underneath, it should uh, stay. Oh, there we go. Okay, 42, 42. That's what I'd expect. And then if I pull it away. So it's like it's getting lighter and that makes sense. Pull it away. Jumps up. It, it goes up, spikes up, and then it goes back down again. And then, see? Then it transitions back up to its weight. So there's like this spike where it goes up, and then goes down, and then holds for a few seconds and then goes back up again to its rest state or initial weight. Now, let's try something else. Let's try diesel. Now this is really expensive by the way, <clears throat> so I hope you appreciate this. Okay, so it's weighing 57.3623 or 363 grams. I just want to show that it's, uh, its response to magnetism is, uh, appears to be diamagnetic. So what I'll do is, um, same thing here. So three, six, call that three, six, three. Now I'll put the magnet under here. Dips down, goes back up again. Three, six, about three, six, three, where we started. 
Just leave it for a moment. I bet what's going to happen is it's going to dip down. There, see? 3.3, three, it dips down like 30 milligrams. And now if I pull it away, what's going to happen is it's going to spike up and then down quickly. And then it's going to hold here for a few seconds. And then it's going to go back up to the 363 or whatever. Watch. Spikes up, 363, 37, whatever. Okay, didn't really do it that time. I'll try it again. Anyways, this is quite interesting. It's not what I expect to happen. I mean, this is, you know, not a conductive material here, so as far as eddy currents go, I wouldn't expect there to be anything like that. 362, okay, let's try this again. Dips down, goes back up again. Actually, I'm not quite under, oh well. Um, and it goes down, 339, goes down about 20, 30 milligrams, and that's probably where it's going to stabilize. So put the magnet like right underneath. Okay, so it's stabilized there, so we expect there a little bit of to be there a little bit a little bit of diamagnetism, so there's a little bit of repulsion making this appear lighter. That makes sense. But when I pull this away, spikes up, goes back down, holds. For a few seconds. There, it goes back up again, 363. Three. So if anyone knows what's going on here, I'd really appreciate uh, some kind of explanation. Because I can't think of any conventional reason why that would be behaving that way. <laughs> In these clips, you'll see some different materials that show some torque or rotational motion when strong magnets are placed underneath them. What I find interesting is that the, the torque or the, the torsional motion seems more evident than the, the drag uh, due to paramagnetic or diamagnetic uh, forces. You'll notice that that's much more um, more obvious. I observed this effect uh, last summer, and haven't made any videos about it yet. I lost a lot of my original, a lot of my original video clips uh, by mistake. So right here, what you're seeing is a, a little lead puck, and uh, that's just some neodymium magnets there. I'm moving. I had Jeremiah Pop um, replicate some of my, my experiments here. What you're looking at there is a high density polyethylene disc, which I, that's his, his version there. Weird, right? So the blue arrows are the new oscillation point, but the main thing is the depth and the speed of the oscillation even more torque in the same direction with the magnet flipped and now it's a faster oscillation with less distance tension is building a flip again 
And now look at how fast it is oscillating under that amount of tension, even shorter. Same result when the magnet is removed, of course. Resets back to its starting position. But why? Why is the behavior so different here then, when the disc is on the side? I hate to show you this way, but I'm having issues with my video compressor, so I'll just play it. That's the start point. Magnet goes underneath. Oscillates a little bit. I'll center it. Centering it really matters, so that gives us our new end point and our return. Now we flip the magnet, reinsert it, but it's not quite center yet, so I recenter it, and then boom, huge response. And now we have a new oscillation point. It's gonna oscillate about the same number of degrees except for the added energy, but it'll swing back and forth between these two points and it will stay there until the magnet is removed. And now we can see just how much torque was being continuously applied to the disc now that the magnet's gone, because we can see its swing back point is way farther. And that's the end of the oscillation. You can see that the starting arrow was right at that same point where the uh, center of the far swing and the return swing was at the very end. So, yeah, there's a continuous torque apparently applied by the magnet. I'm now doing a one and a half hour test trial to see if it um, if it will hold that position indefinitely or if it will eventually uh, fall back to neutral. So this was another test setup he did with, uh, you can see an electromagnet there. All right, let's see what we get. What we found is that the HDPE type plastic seems to have a very strong response uh, compared to other types of plastics. That was all with the same pole. So thanks again to Jeremiah Pop for doing such a great job replicating these experiments and he also has a new channel out called Exotic Propulsion so be sure to check it out and subscribe and also Subscribe to this channel too if you find it helpful, inspiring, educational. What you're looking at there is a test tube with some calcium copper titanate dielectric powder in there. And it actually rotates a little bit when it's near the transformer. When I apply power to the coil, there's a magnetic field that goes around the core. And during that transition when it's on and off, you'll see the test tube start to rotate a little bit. So I decided to try this out uh, recently here with some little uh, glass jars with water in them. And if you'll notice, um, in particular the, the angular motion there, that seems to be much stronger than any kind of lateral motion that you'd expect from paramagnetism or diamagnetism. All these clips are at five times speed. I found the effect that uh, when, you, when, when I put the magnet near the sides of the jar or the material that it there seems to be more torque. I found that kind of strange, like in this case right here. You can see there's a lot more torque. That also worked with the nylon, the nylon bar, which you'll see here in a minute. It's the same thing. The amount of torque that's developed in the nylon when I put the magnet on there, um, perpendicular.
Here's the nylon bar I was talking about. Notice how there's no practically no discernible rotation there. So now watch what happens when I do this. This is what I was mentioning before about coming in from the side. This is interesting too. That right there is a, a disc of acrylic. And finally, I wanted to put this old clip on here. That's, uh, I think it's the same piece of acrylic, but it's just sitting on top of some water there with a strong magnet underneath the plastic container at the bottom. You'll see the rotation of the disc happening here.